as we draw now to thee in the Saviour's name this morning, we do so very conscious that thou art God and beside thee there is none other. We wish of thee because thou art the eternal one, the one who breathed thy breath into man and man became a living soul. And Father, we acknowledge today how much we need thee. Every day we live we have the burdens of life that thy thyself has providentially placed away, but we're glad that we can cast those burdens upon thee knowing that God hath cared for us. We do pray for Violet and Mrs. Cummings and the family, very especially this morning, and we pray that thy grace is love and power that rest upon their lives. Thou knowest that the passing of the years has not diminished the grief, neither has it removed the burden of sorrow. But thou thyself art the man of sorrows, the one acquainted with grief, and we pray that thou would encircle those who in sorrow today with that love that will not let them go. We commend this little service to thee in memory of James and Fred, and we pray that thy great name will be glorified. This we come to pray for our Savior's sake. Amen. I'd like just to take a moment to welcome you to the service and also to express our apology for Mrs. Cummings, who would love to be present today, but is not able so to do. Our scripture reading is from the Psalm 121, a very familiar psalm. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shield upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even for evermore. It is hard to believe that it is now 33 years since the murder of James and Fred. And over these past 32 years, we've been very privileged to conduct a service in their memory. Uh, this year, of course, has had its own particular problems uh, with the pandemic and all the regulations associated with it. But it is good that we can turn to God's unchanging word. It's not affected by circumstances or by problems. The word of God remains exactly the same. And in this Psalm 121, we have this great exhortation to lift up our eyes onto the hills from whence uh, cometh our help. And of course that relationship with the Lord is the most crucial, the most vital experience of all. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And the great need in the midst of this pandemic undoubtedly is for men and women to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. I know that Fred's burden would have been for the loss for those unconverted souls on the road to a crisis eternity. And it is our prayer that those who may watch this service might hearken to the challenge of God's word and be born again of God the Holy Spirit. But we find in this wonderful psalm there are six references to the experience of being kept by God. And the first one, of course, is in this uh, opening verse. I will. Uh, lift up mine eyes unto the hills, and whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And then we read, He that keepeth thee, thou will not slumber. And the emphasis there is in God's personalization. God doesn't say us as collective people. He sees us as individuals. He knows the example of the king of heaven and earth. He knows the distress of the bird. And he looks on us as his family, as his children, as his friends. And I know for the Violet, for Mrs. Cummings and the family, the Lord is able to keep them because 
the first few months as emperors in them. And then we also read, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. That is an emphasis of God's promise. The fact that he keepeth Israel is a promise that is one of three, because in the promise is the word of the Messiah. The very fact that the Lord Jesus Christ through the village of the Promises that in his own word, but he will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is dead upon him. Then we've also got God's power, he shall preserve my soul. That is the eternal part of us, that eternal aspect of our lives that is unfailing, undying, and unchanging. The soul never dies. That's the reality of God's precious word. The body dies diminishes in its strength and in its ability to maintain life, but the soul continues on, either in heaven or else in hell. That's the challenge that faces us as we preach the gospel. But for God's people, we are kept by His power spiritually, and for that, we are so thankful. Then the last reference to the word keep is in the final verse of the psalm, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That is God's perpetuality. In other words, he doesn't just keep us today. He keeps us tomorrow and he keeps us forever. And I'm sure that Violet and Mrs. Cummings would readily acknowledge that the Lord has been good to them over these past 33 years. It's just impossible to think why people can bear burden so we have to keep your God in terms of his personal position, in terms of his promise, in terms of his product, in terms of his protection, in terms of his power, and in terms of his perpetuality. I will therefore lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I trust the God to the best of the and the comforting of our hearts today. Just before we do make the Easter, we will have our silence.
great creator of all things, and we know that from thee our help is found. Our Father, we ask thee to draw its face from here, to all the sorrowing today. Thou knowest the many families throughout this province who wear the black crepe of sorrow upon their heart. We pray that thou wouldst be with them, that even as we remember them today, that they too might look to thee as the one who is able to help in their time and in their hour of great extremity. We pray for many that are not saved, and it is a major burden to our hearts to think of precious souls going out into eternity without the knowledge of life's great salvation. Our Father, we pray that the eyes of many will be opened, that their spirits will be made sensitive today to the challenge of thy word, that today is the day of salvation. Our Father, do speak to the and Mrs. Cummings, bless the family servant. We commend them to thy tender keeping, and pray that our Lord Jesus Christ himself may be magnified and may be exalted. This we humbly, we earnestly pray in our Saviour's name. Amen. Just before we uh, have the doxology, the prayer, the closing prayer, we'll try to say the last thing. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save our Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to Try. 